Hello everyone, and welcome to my Yangqing guide. Today I will show you how to play Yangqing and how to build him. First, let's start off with his talents. So his talent, when with the sword, is his main source of damage and value as a hunt character. When Soul Steel Sync is active, Yangqing is less likely to be attacked by enemies. Yangqing's crit rate increases by an amount based on talent level, and his crit rate damage increases. After Yangqing attacks an enemy, there is a fixed chance based on talent level to perform a follow-up attack dealing ice damage equal to a percentage of Yangqing's attack to the enemy, which has a 65% chance to freeze the enemy for one turn. The frozen target cannot take action and receives additional ice damage equal to the percentage of Yangqing's attack at the beginning of each turn. When Yangqing receives damage, the Soul Sail Sync effect will also disappear. Also, the follow-up attack Yangqing performs regenerates energy for his ultimate, and it doesn't say that in the talent, but I'm not sure why, but it does. Um, so in short, Soul Steel Sync you want up all the time because it increases your damage, and Soul Stink will disappear if Yangqing takes damage. Note that shield damage does not count as taking damage, and we will get into that in the team building section. Yangqing's skill, darting Iron Thorn, which makes uh, ice, deal, ice damage equal to a talent level of Yangqing's attack to a single enemy, and activates Soul Steel Sync for one turn. So you want to be using this skill whenever you can to maintain Soul Steel Sync and increase your damage. This leads into his ultimate, Admiss Raining Blues, or Bliss, um, and it increases Yangqing's crit rate by 60%, and when Soul Steel Sync is active, increases Yangqing's crit damage by an extra value based on talent level. This buff lasts for one turn, and afterwards deals ice damage based on Yangqing's talents and attacks a single enemy. So Yangqing's ult benefits from Soul Steel Sync. Lastly, Yangqing's technique, the One True Sword. Uh, after using his technique at the start of battle, Yangqing deals 30% more damage for two turns to enemies whose current HP is 50% or higher. Next, let's look at Yangqing's traces. For trace priority, you want to upgrade his talent, then his skill, then his ultimate. Don't worry about upgrading his normal attack because you should only be using his skill. Focus on getting attack and ice stat damage bonuses. Um, next, let's look in the light cones. Seven. For free to play light cones, um, River Flows in Spring is a good 4 star because it provides speed and damage. Uh, and it's a good it's a good light cone because you can get it from Forgotten Hall and you can superimpose it really easily and the damage increase is the same as Soul Seal Sync so if you lose the Soul Seal Sync you also lose this light cone's effect the next light cone is Sword Play because it provides a huge stacking bonus on single targets, so this would be great for bosses, or just not a lot of adds, but it is a very good light cone for damage on bosses. Uh, the next light cone is for free-to-play 5-star, which is Cruising in the Stellar Sea. Um, Cruising in the Cellar Sea is really good because you're going to attain it from Simulated Universe and also assume pose it very easily. Um, cruising in the Cellar Sea gives crit rate and extra crit rate for enemies with 50% HP or less. It also gives extra attack when the wearer defeats an enemy for two turns. And the next light cone is not free to play, but it is Sleep Like the Dead which increases the wearer's crit damage by 30%, and when the, crit, the wearer's cr basic attack or skill does not result in a crit hit, increase the wearer's crit rate for 36 for one turn. And this effect can only be triggered once every three turns. Um, I wouldn't recommend this one because you have to not crit to get its effect, and 
you can only trigger that every three turns so it would be better to have a light cone that is on all the time like sword play or in the night as we'll go over so the next and final light cone is in the night because this one is good because it increases the wearer's crit rate by 18 percent and while the wearer is in battle for every 10 speed that exceeds 100 the damage of the wearer's basic attack and skill is increased by 6% and the crit damage of their ultimate is increased by 12% and this effect can stack up to 6 times so you can get some pretty high numbers because of that. Um, note that you have to build Yang Qing with speed for this and you it benefits you to use characters who buff speed because you need to build speed to get very good value out of this light cone. Next, let's talk about Yang Qing's relics. For relics, you definitely want to go Hunter of Glacial Forest because of the ice damage it gives you and the crit damage that it gives you for two turns after you use your ultimate. Um, an alternative to this, if you don't have this, is Musketeer's Wind or Musketeer of Wild Wheat, which increases the attack by 12. So you'll have two piece of this and two piece of Hunter of Glacial Forest. Um, for the Sphere and Rope sets, um, you want to go Space Ceiling Station because it increases your attack potentially by 24% if you have 100 of, uh, 120 speed or higher. Um, this is a really good set because it increases your attack and increases all of your numbers just across the board and is very good because you can get it from lower world simulated universe. Um, the alternative to this set is Inert Solsado and this increases the wearer's crit rate by 8% and when the wearer's crit, current crit rate reaches 50% or higher, the wearer's ultimate and follow-up attack damage increases by 15%. This one is something I wouldn't recommend because most of your damage is a combination of your talent and your skill, not your ult. So uh, this doesn't increase your skills damage, so I wouldn't recommend this one. So uh, for substats, you want crit damage crit rate, attack, speed, and break effect. So you want those on everything, and that's, yeah. For main stats, for the body, you either want crit rate or crit damage. For the feet, you either want speed, if you need speed for in the night or whatever, or you want attack to increase the damage that you do. Um, for sphere, you definitely want ice damage. I don't have ice damage on this, but it is space and station, so that's why I'm using that. But you definitely want ice damage for your main stat. And for the rope, you can either go energy recharge to spam ultimates and just have your ultimate buff up all the time to do increased damage, or you have attack to further increase your damage just across the board and not your just your ult. So yeah, let's talk about Eidolons. So his Eidolon 1, um, Yang Ching's Eidolon 1 Svelte Saber makes Yang Ching's attacks do an additional 60% of his attack to frozen enemies. Uh, his E2, Supine Serenade, uh, when Soul Sink when Soul Steel Sink is active, re energy regeneration rate and increases by an extra 10%. So that's good. Uh, his E4 is Searing Sting. When the current HP percent is 80% or higher, ice resistance and penetration increases by 12%. And lastly, his E6, Swift Swoop. If the ultimate buffs are still in effect, when an enemy is defeated, their duration is extended by one turn. So what that means is that if you have the buffs from the ultimate and you defeat an enemy, the buffs will uh, have their 
time extended by one turn. So next, let's talk about team comps and who you should use. So the premium team, the best team to use him in is Japard, Ting Yun, and Natasha's a flex unit, but Yang Ching, of course. Because if you have his his Yang Ching's E1, where you need to freeze people, March and Japard are gonna be your premier tanks because you do not want Yang Ching to get hit for this because you want Soul Steel Sync to be active up all the time and you don't want him to get hit. So Japard drags his aggro towards him and March puts the shield on herself or whatever to have the enemies attack her. For the second slot, you definitely want to either go Ting Yun or Branya if you have her to increase and buff Yongqing's damage. Um, there isn't much to be said about that. Um, if you have Branya and Ting Yun, you can swap Natasha out for Ting Yun, or Ting Yun and Branya and just have two Harmony characters buffing Yongqing. That works really well. But if you don't have both of them, then you can just use Natasha as a healer. Um, if you don't have Yongqing's E1, you can use Fire MC as the tank because you don't need to freeze enemies and you can just tank and taunt the enemies to attacking you. And this last slot, Silver Wolf might be here so that you can bring this ice team into any fight and still have the enemy's weakness to ice, but this is kind of only... Uh, vulnerable to ice teams so lastly will just be gameplay of how a team or fight will look with young Ching. ちょっとした小さ。涼しいですね。見つけた。客を持てなさないと幸せ解散。お注射に時間お休み。うん。輪を持って到達。その手。槍先に火を炎塗るよ。立ち切れ。冒険たち行け。剣よ。俺に従え。<laughs> and with that, thank you for watching.